Welcome back to the Tot Not Told podcast. I have a super fun, unique, exciting episode for here for you. So my friend Gabe over here, uh, he wanted to do something different. He actually wanted to ask me some questions and I was super excited to do this. And so uh, we're going to kind of shoot some questions back and forth and uh, ultimately bring you some value from a coach's perspective. So uh, that being said, if you can take a moment to follow our podcast on Spotify, it would mean the world to me. And that being said, let's dive right in. All right. So I just finished the podcast with Tyler here, Tyler Stutter of the TNT podcast. Whoa, Studer. You know what? It's actually <laughs> fair now that we do that because yeah. he mispronounced my last name. I swear. This guy was like Z- Zepeda. Zepeda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we're even. I swear. I, I thought it's it was hilarious. Stutter. No, it's but all good. But Studer. Okay, yeah. Studer. I'm sorry. No, but uh, no, we just hilarious. we just finished the podcast. He asked me some questions. They're really good questions. So now I just wanted to ask Tyler here. I want to first introduce him and then ask him a question. So Tyler um tell um tell everyone about a little bit about yourself and your background yeah um to put it shortly uh i played sports most of my life i played soccer at a high level i played semi-pro for a year i played in college for two years and after running for miles and miles and miles and uh, as soon as i stopped i finally um, started putting on muscle because i wasn't running it all off my body and uh once i figured out that, you know, I could start to change who I was as a person through health and fitness, I reinvented myself, I found who I am, what I love, Uh, I completely changed my confidence, I really I I came out of my shell in that moment. And uh, what I realized is it was it was like the most empowering thing ever was to have complete control over my health and fitness. And uh, I began my mission to help other people experience that same drive that same growth in their own lives and so because of how much fitness impacted me i wanted to have that same impact on other people and since then i've been doing this about six years i've helped over 500 people um, completely transform their lives through health and fitness i now have a team that works under me and i train people across the nation so it's uh it's been the most amazing journey i could have ever asked for that's awesome that's awesome man so i would have to ask you then what is the number one misconception that most people have when just starting out with their weight loss journey? That's a fantastic question. I think the biggest misconception people have is that they need to know everything to get started. I think most people delay the first step like years. And really what it takes is just taking that first step and taking doing that first thing, taking that first action instead of delaying it over and over again. And uh, once you actually start, you'll realize it's a lot easier than you think. And I think it's like that analysis uh, or paralysis by analysis is like the biggest like mistake people make is they overthink like, oh, I got to know how many macros or I got to know how much protein. It's like, no, just start. Just start making better choices. Just start showing up at the gym. You don't need to know how to lift. Just show up there and you'll start to see other people doing things. You'll start to get that get that drive, that motivation to like, okay, maybe I'm ready to go step on the gym floor. Let's start on just walking on the treadmill. Like I feel like most of the people that are so uncomfortable in the gym, the first thing I tell them is like, go to the gym and just walk. That's all you need to do. That's all you have to do to get started. But a lot of people don't even, aren't even willing to just start there. And so it's like just getting in that environment, getting in the room with, with other people who are all trying to better themselves. It's like, um, the one last misconception I'll say about that is a lot of people think the gym is like this like egotistical, like scary place to be. And I will tell you, especially from my own experience of when I was scared shitless to walk inside of a gym, when I actually went in there, it was the most welcoming place. I was the beginner. I had no idea what I was doing. I was afraid to go to the weights. And when I asked someone a question, he's like, dude, yeah, yeah, come over here. I'll like, let me show you how to do this. And I was like, I went and asked the biggest, buffest guy, and he's the nicest human. I was so fucking scared of him. And so I think the the biggest mistake is just, like, not taking that first step, not getting in that room. And uh, honestly, once you do, you'll start to realize it's a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. And uh, people are – everyone's there out there to help you in the gym because everyone's on that same journey of trying to get better as a human. That's, that's really good. That's really good advice. Um, now that we're on this topic, I know this isn't on the script, but – Um, I have a few clients that do not like going to the gym and they like to work out at home. Just be, it's more convenient. Yeah. What would you say? What's, what would you give advice to them? Do they have to go to the gym? Is it mandatory? 
or can they just do their own thing? Like, what, can they still follow a program that's at home workouts? Can they do other things other than lifting weights? What would you say? Yeah, dude, that is a fantastic question. I'll break this down and I'll give you like two or three different answers to this because it, it can I just, it, my, my favorite answer is it depends. And I think it really just depends on what that person truly wants to accomplish. And I'm sure you've probably told your clients and I'm sure you know this and it, most coaches know this as well. It's like, um, most people know this, which is like 80 to 90% of your results come from your nutrition. And like, if you can really take care of your health nutritionally, a lot of the physical aspects will take care of themselves. Now, you can't just sit on your ass all day and expect to look and feel a certain way. You have to move. So movement for you can look like going on hour long walks, 30 minute walks every day. Now, depending on your aesthetic goals, like if you want to look like an athlete or you want to have a specific aesthetic, you can enhance or speed up that process by picking up weights, lifting inside the gym. Now, I also have had clients who have seen amazing physical results by working out at home. Body weight movement is extremely underrated. I mean, I know some, some branches of the military don't even do weight training. They do body weight. It's like all calisthenics. And like, I'm sure you could Google someone that's like a professional calisthenics guy and uh, with just body weight, you can build an amazing physique at home. You could use bands and see amazing results. So if, if, you're, if you're afraid to go to the gym, on the other hand, I think that's actually a good thing for you to overcome that fear. I think going to the gym in general is a great fear to overcome because it's, again, it's, it's, it's about the growth that you'll see in doing that. But I don't think you need the gym to see amazing results. I think what you need is some sort of progressive um, stimulus. And if that stimulus is body weight, if that stimulus is bands, if that stimulus is in the gym or it's at home, no matter what it is, if there is a stimulus, yes, you can see results. And it just depends on like, you can't become a power lifter using bands. You know, so like when I wanted to compete powerlifting, I had to use barbells. But if I just wanted to like look good, feel good, and uh, it wasn't me being super jacked or anything, it was like I could absolutely see amazing results and build the f a great physique working out at home. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just really think the, the last point in that I think I mentioned already, but it's like if you if you do want to accelerate that as much as possible, if you want to enhance that as much as possible. I believe personally that going to the gym is the best and, and fastest way to do so, but you absolutely do not need the gym. I love this a lot. So now that we're, we're going with this, I'm going to keep asking you a few yeah, more questions because this is good. What do you think is the number one mistake people are making right now? Like as they're trying to improve their overall health, like for okay. longevity, they're just trying to like, Hey, I don't want to be fat. I don't want to risk diabetes. I just want to be, feeling good. I don't want to be fat. I just want to be in good shape. That's a great question. The first thing that came to mind was the word restriction. I think when you come from a place of restriction, um, I, immediately I, I begin thinking about like, if you don't enjoy it, you won't do it. If you hate it, if you are stopping yourself from enjoying the things that also extremely matter in life and holding yourself back from those experiences, you are going to restrict your results. You're going to restrict your happiness. And there's no point in looking or feeling a certain way if you're not happy. And so when I think of this, it really comes down to like, what is your dream life or what is your life? What do you want it to look like? Do you have, do you want to tell your friends I can't go there because there's going to be too many treats and I'm going to be pressured to eat that? Or do you want to see results while still being able to like go to social events with family and friends or going to your kids or your, your grandma's birthday party? Do you want to be able to uh, go out with your friends and go see a movie? Do you want to um, be able to go to a holiday dinner with your family, and not be feel peer pressured to have that piece of pie or that, that cookie? Um, I think restriction is, is the enemy. I, I genuinely think that you should be able to enjoy the foods that you love while seeing amazing results. And I do think that if you do include those in moderation, it doesn't mean eat like an asshole, but it means you should still include those things when you want them. I think uh, one of my buddies, Jared Hamilton, um, he, he says 
he, he's a, an amazing communicator. And I think one thing he really hammers into his clients and teaches them is like this idea of avoiding self-sabotage and, and self-sabotage, I believe is rooted in that restriction mindset of like needing to pull back on things. Um, but when it comes to being able to sustain results, you, you, you want to avoid self-sabotage and you want to be able to include those things. And so uh, I think the best way to avoid those binging movements is not restricting. And when you do have a craving, you do have something that comes up and you're like, I really want that cookie. Like, go eat the fucking cookie. Like, eat the cookie when you, right when you want it. Because then you're less likely to go crush a full sleeve of Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies. You'll, you can have one in that moment. But if you wait till your craving's a 10 out of 10 and you're just like deprived yourself of it, you are gonna go overboard. You're gonna be upset after. You're gonna be mad at yourself. And it's gonna go in this spiral of you going back downhill. So I think to continue moving forward, when that craving's a three out of 10 or two out of 10 or one out of 10, go have the cookie. And when you're not restricting yourself, you're gonna find you're gonna be able to go much longer, much further in your journey. And it's gonna be much happier and more enjoyable life you create when you get there. That's amazing. That's really good. Thank you. I, um, Tyler and I know this is not a professional question to ask and because we know the science behind it, but I'm sure a lot of people, and I know a lot of probably your clients who just start out with you want to know what is the fastest way to lose body fat in 30 days. Like summer's coming up. It's April right now. I want to look good in my bikini. I want to look good. I want to look like I have a six pack. What is the fastest way? Tell me number one, just one thing. Like what do I got to do to accelerate my, my progress? Cut your arm off. It's the fastest way to lose 30 pounds. Cut your arm off. <laughs> People I mean, are going to be happy with that answer. Real, real, realistic. I mean, if, if you want to be realistic, the fastest way to lose that 20, 30 pounds is cut your freaking leg or your arm off. And, and like, cool. Like, there you oh. go. But oh. let me be honest. If, uh, <clears throat> if you want to go fast, it's also the fastest way to gain that weight back and then some. So... My, I always tell people when they, when they ask me this, and I'm going to be very honest, I, I don't like this question because of the fact that it's unrealistic for most people. And so what I explain to people is like, okay, we have two options. At this point in time, you have two options. We can get there as quickly as possible with a 98% chance that you gain it back and more weight after. Or you take your time, you do it the right way. Sure, this summer, you might be unhappy. But what if I tell you for the next 15 summers of your life, you can go on the beach in your bikini or your swimsuit, be extremely confident, extremely happy, and maybe find the love of your life on that beach. Or maybe be super comfortable actually taking your shirt off when you go to your kid's pool party. Wouldn't that be more worth it to you to be able to experience those things and be confident in your own skin for the rest of your life? Or is it just this one summer that really matters? I would, I would highly encourage you to really think about that and understand that I think 15 to 20 more summers is much more valuable than this one summer. And I think that when you put it in that perspective, I could care less how much you lose in 30 days. I care about you building the foundation for lifelong success. And I'm sorry if that answer frustrates you. It doesn't frustrate me. I, I already told you, it's not, you and I both know it's not a professional question to ask, <laughs> but people ask all the time, like for what's sure. the fastest route to get there? But no, I totally agree with Tyler on that. Totally agree with it because it is all a journey and it's supposed to be a journey because no one gets it done so quickly. And if they get it done quickly, they did some things that are not sustainable or they did 100%. some, uh, they took some things that, but regardless, it's just, uh, it's not sustainable, but I totally agree with Tyler on that. All right, man. Um, I'm going to end it with this question. You've known me for how long? Two, two and a half years now. I came in October Long 2022. Here. Or we took a we class met in together. School, yeah, we met in school probably 20 during COVID. So it was 21, 22, 2021, 2020, 2021. Yeah, One 2021. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, it's like yeah. three years now. Yeah. Almost, or two and a half, three years. That's yeah. crazy. So what was your first impression of me and what do you think of me now? That's a great question. I already have a feeling what he's going to say. You know, when, when Gabe first came to the gym, um, my first impression was like, he's the quiet kid. Very quiet, very to himself, um, but also very focused. Like, no matter what skill he had as a coach, I could tell he gave a fuck. He genuinely cared. And that's why I have a respect for Gabe, is because 
no matter how correct, incorrect, or what I thought about the, what I saw specifically in the gym, what I did know is that he genuinely cares about his people. He genuinely cares about his clients. I could see the conversations he had, how engaged he was in those conversations, the eye contact, and like that is is inspiring in a way, man. And I, and I think that there are too many coaches in the industry that are there for a paycheck, that are there to con them with their their ways to results and to you know restrict uh, restrict their clients' food so they can just give them instant results and so they could post their transformation on social media it's like I, I never saw that with Gabe and I could tell that you were in it for the long run like you are passionate about helping people and I think more recently I've started to realize more and more how growth minded you are and I think that in order to really go places in business but also in life and on journey, your fitness journey um for anyone really it's like you have to be growth minded you have to be open to change open to feedback and uh i don't believe i knew you well enough to know that's how you were so it's easy to make assumptions but um i did see your passion i did see your focus and intention which was to help other people through and through and uh i think that's what matters most as a coach so i respected that I appreciate that. I appreciate Absolutely. that very much. I was gonna say something, but I was just like, man, I don't want to look like the dick here. Because <laughs> I was gonna be like, I was gonna be like, oh, my first impression, my first impression of you Please when do. I first when I first yeah. saw you. I like, first of all, I knew you stood out just because uh, we took a course together, and we were this was during COVID, and so we were doing a Zoom call, and so not just him and I, but it was just in a, in a group class, and I saw this guy, and just you know, he looked like to me first impression you know just like this meathead like this guy thinks he's the shit and uh that was just really my insecurity and uh i saw that he was working out of a gym didn't i just knew his name and then when i went to go apply to self-made in orange i saw this guy and i was like oh shit this guy but uh, not this guy yeah again. this guy and <laughs> so hilarious. but i already knew right then and there like this guy stood out for sure and me who i am like as like my personality is i'm very competitive I don't usually show it like people don't might not see it like on the outside, but in the inside, I'm very competitive. And so um, in the very beginning, I always wanted to just be the best in the gym. And uh, that's why I was the quiet kid. And uh, but he's um, an observer. You're an observer. I'm, I'm an observer for that's sure. That's what I was looking for. 100 <laughs> percent. I'm, I'm definitely an observer. And so over time, I knew I knew Tyler was um, definitely someone that like that stood out amongst the crowd. And uh, I've always wanted to, didn't know exactly what he was doing, but I just knew he was getting mentorship. And I knew that like, if I have to be the best, like I got to do what the best are doing. And so I went to go look for help. And that's why I was with NCI. And, uh, and so I haven't looked back. And now, now that I got to know Tyler a bit more after uh, yesterday, it was actually yesterday, I got to know him even more because uh, we went out, had something to eat and we were talking and, uh, Man, it's this, uh it's amazing like how much like I didn't really know much about this guy and um it I can relate a lot to him and how he sees his future and how he cares about his clients cuz him and I both have like the same passion for our clients which is that we genuinely care and that we really want to um be be the best out there, be the best coaches, be the best trainers and uh so I told him that I was very appreciative of just him just pushing me even though he didn't like physically and he didn't probably know that I was pushing that he was pushing me but he really was so I was telling him that I was like I was very appreciative of him and that yeah I'm glad we're here I'm glad we're both killing it we're both we both stand out thanks for, sure. for your kind words bro this is this has been a pleasure and uh I'm thankful we we sat down and had this conversation and uh, I think uh our, our goal with this and I could tell was ultimately to help the people on the other side of this and I feel like uh the people who listen to this will get a ton of value and I uh, appreciate your time, man. That was, yeah. that was awesome. Bro. <laughs> mm. We totally redid that. I totally yeah. messed up that first one. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like we hey, didn't mess uh, that one up. Really